A new era begins right now, my excellent friends. Football Manager 2024 is here, and I'm here to show you how to play with no tactics, no team talks, no training, not even choosing the team. Today, my friends, I start my career as the director of Moneyball. Now, as you can see, we have some new surroundings, but this journey began last year on FM23. Ten seasons and seven trophies later, we categorically proved it is possible to be in incredibly successful in FM without managing a single match. So this year, we're making it harder. From the sixth tier of English football, all the way to the very top with just one club, Hemel Hempstead Town. Now this is a club that was founded 140 years ago and they've never played at a higher level than the Vanarama National League South. Our facilities are, it's fair to say, pretty poor. As you can see, my office here at Hemel Hempstead is very humble, so I suspect this may be quite a long journey to the Premier League. The media are predicting a 12th placed finish for us. We have no players in the Media Dream 11, but the board require us to reach the playoffs. So this would be a challenge even if I was playing FM normally. So let's turn things up a notch and set ourselves up as the director of football. Now, if you'd like to play along with this type of save, which I can highly recommend, it is definitely my favorite way to play FM. The first thing to do is go to the staff screen and set up your responsibilities. As I mentioned, I have no interest in team selection, so I will be delegating that one, but I will retain control of recruiting all of the staff across every single team. You're in charge of the whole strategic football operation when playing as director of football and you'll be looking at a far bigger picture than a typical head coach and just a quick note make sure you hit confirm otherwise you'll keep having to go back and do it again and again and again scouting is an area that you will want total control of as of course you will for transfers and contract negotiations. When did you ever see a director of football talk to the media though? Delegate that all to the recommended staff member. We have no interest in training or tactics or set pieces. And we'll delegate everything for match days as well, except leading friendly matches. And we will come back to the reasons for that when we reach our first match day. And there we have it. We have handed over full control of the first team to our staff. So we'd uh, better go and meet them. Our scouting team on paper is pretty good compared to the rest of the division. Even though we only have the one scout in place, Errol Hassan. Quite a lot of pressure on his shoulders then for the first season. And we do have two more scouting berths available. So let's get some adverts out there. The medical team, not great, but no recruitment opportunities. So they will have to be good enough for now. The coaching team though, yeah, they could do with a bit of work. Must say, it's absolutely fascinating to see ex-Chelsea goalkeeper Dimitri Karin as our non-contracted goalkeeping coach. That I was not expecting at all. But I want to take a look at the most important person for anyone who plays as a director of football, your assistant manager. So greetings, Daniel Jones. It is a pleasure to meet you. This is the person who is going to develop our players, coach our team, choose the tactics and make every decision on match day. It is absolutely critical we get this one right because the board will hold me accountable for all of these results, even though it's Dan who will be in charge of the team. And I've got to be honest, I'm not massively impressed with what I'm seeing here. He's pretty determined, he's got a good level of discipline and not awful at managing people. Judge of ability and potential could become a real issue. He's also sticking pretty rigidly to a 4-4-2. If we're really going to push for those playoffs, we need a higher calibre assistant manager. And to find one, I recommend a view a little bit like this. There's a link to this view in the description below, so please do check it out. It shows us the preferred formations of potential staff members, their playing mentality, their pressing style, their tactical style, if they do have one embedded in the game, and of course, their managerial attributes, which are gonna be absolutely critical. So we are looking for assistant managers who are decent judges of ability and potential for this level of football, decent people management, good at motivating and solid tactical knowledge. And we have two candidates, that's it. Luke Vokins, like Dan Jones, 
fairly determined, good level of discipline, but he is immediately a much better judge of ability and potential. Plays a 4-2-3-1, which is interesting, and looks like a wing play system, uses crosses, looks for the overlap. Sam Cox is more of a 4-4-2 man, doesn't really have an embedded tactical style, although his attributes look significantly better. And if we directly compare the two, there really is no contest. Vokins is slightly better at working with youngsters, but in every other measure for our first team manager, Sam Cox wins out. He has to be the one that we go for. So we will offer him a contract for 12 months as our assistant manager, and he accepts straight away. Wonderful stuff. Another notable factor in Cox's favour was the fact that he would play adventurous football. The board are looking for us to play an attacking style of football. So we just need to do Sam one favour before he joins. Even though we are playing as director of football, we do still need to set up the preferred tactic for our assistant manager. In this case, a wing play, 4-4-2, and we will switch to a positive mentality to meet Sam Cox's adventurous style. And then, although we are not taking training, our coaching team is training the squad to play in Sam Cox's preferred formation. I noticed as well, he also has a 5-3-2 as his second preferred formation. So we will set up another version of this tactic with five at the back. I have no idea how often Sam will use it, but the option will now be there for him as the players start to build their familiarity with that style. So we can now accept the board's vision for the future. They are giving us one, two, three years to make it to the National League. So let's take a look at the players who are hopefully going to get us there. You know what? This is actually quite exciting. We have four players with significantly high potential. Now, Montel McKenzie is the first player to jump out. He's already a decent player for most National League South sides and could be a National League right back in future. He's a no-nonsense fullback, so maybe not the attacking threat that I would like from a wing back, but obviously it's not my choice. It's going to be down to Sam Cox as to how this team plays. Alfie Matthews doesn't have quite that level of potential, but is a bit better already. A good National League South player currently. His natural leadership at the age of 21 is absolutely remarkable. This guy could lead us to the National League over the next couple of years for sure. A natural pressing forward. It's no surprise why he's got the work rate, got the determination, the pace, the stamina, the strength to make that work and a decent amount of natural fitness for a tier six player as well. Terrell Whitaker on paper is the best player at the club currently. Good player already for most National League sides. Woo! And his physical attributes are remarkable. He's so speedy, his pace, his agility, his balance, his dribbling, his flair, his technique. He's going to cause a lot of problems when he's on the pitch because, of course, he's fairly susceptible to injuries. Should have seen that one coming. And finally, Tyrese Briscoe, who in terms of potential could reach League 2 level in future. He can play a variety of roles on that left wing and be a pressing forward up front. And another with pace, stamina and acceleration to spare. He's hardworking. He's got great teamwork. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. And in fact, the thing that excites me most about him is the way that he matches up with my preferred club DNA. Now, these are attributes, particularly at this level of football, that I will be looking for in all of the players that I bring in. I want people who are highly determined, who work for the team, who work hard, who can concentrate and are very brave. I do not want players switching off and losing belief because we are going to drop points if that is the case. And physically, I want them to be fast, fit, strong, and able to retain possession. Doesn't matter what formation Sam Cox is going to line the team up with. Those are the baseline attributes for the squad this director of football is going to build at Hemel Hempstead. It's a shame then that Terrell Whitaker, our best player at the club currently, doesn't really excel in those attributes. That is definitely one to watch. But a player who does... Miles Judd, look at how he fits that DNA. He is ahead of Montel McKenzie in the pecking order for that right back berth at the moment, and it's no surprise. Determination, teamwork, work rate, stamina, pace, passing ability. He can do pretty much everything I'm looking for. 
absolute role model for other players at the club there. He doesn't feel comfortable playing big matches. Why can't I just get one, just, just one player who could do everything, please? Just, just one. I want to know, how do we compare to other squads in the National League South? Well, we are young, we are short, and we are cheap. We do have fairly good leadership though, which is good. And given that teamwork is one of my core attributes, we've got the lowest in the entire division. We are at least pacey, uh, very quick out the blocks and naturally fit, that's something. Oh, but our determination, another one of those core attributes is also rock bottom. Okay, quite a lot of work to do on this squad then. And as well as needing to improve the attributes, uh, I need some depth. We've got one goalkeeper, one left back and one right winger who is aging and declining in quality. Brilliant. And I've got zero transfer budget and about £350 a week to fix those problems. Good job then that I am not just the director of football at Hemel Hempstead. I am the director of Moneyball. And I have some rules I'll be applying to my transfer policy here. Rules that will ensure we are financially sustainable as we make our way through the divisions. And those rules are coming up in part two. So subscribe to the channel, my excellent friends, and turn your notifications on to find out the second the next episode drops. This is a series that you do not want to miss.